Hello and welcome to Reading the Library Book. This is a new podcast that I am recording for you. I have so many wonderful friends around the world. Some are young, some are not so young. And I wanted to be able to share uh, my book with you. And this all began when I started working on this book. It's called The Library Book. And I got a chance to read it to my young friend in Vancouver, British Columbia. And it was so helpful to get to read it to her and share it with her and hear what she thought and hear her questions um, that I wished I could read it to uh, all of my young friends around the world. Um, But, you know, a novel takes a long time, so I couldn't figure out how to do that. And that's how this podcast was born. I'm going to read uh, one chapter per episode, and what I'd love for you to do is listen. That's the most important and really only thing to do, is to listen to it. Um, But also, um, once you've heard it or as you listen, if you have any questions or things that you're thinking about or things that you're wondering about, uh, please tell me those things. So um, if you're a young listener, have your have your parents help you figure out the best way to communicate with me. Um, but I would love to hear uh, people's thoughts as we go along, because this is a work in progress. What I'm doing is, is um, while I do have a, a finished draft of the book, I'm still working on it. And different things come and go as I as I work. And You, as a listener, are actually incredibly important for me in my process to figure out uh, what needs developing and where I need to make things clearer or where I need to create more mystery or uh, who knows. So um, I'm going to read this first chapter to you and you, whatever you have, whatever your thoughts are, I particularly want to hear from the young ones. Um... Tell them to me when it's all over. So here's chapter one. Chapter one. The school breezed in before it spit us out. We streamed out the side door through a crowd of parents waiting for their kids. As the flood of students moved through the crowd, the group got smaller and smaller until only a few of us remained in the flow away from the building. At the corner, more kids peeled away some heading east, some heading west. I continued north toward the library, the crossing guard waving me ahead with her white gloved hands. My backpack was heavy. I made my way up the hill, which felt like a mountain on days like today. I passed the yellow house, the green house, and the blue house, while cars full of families drove past me up the street. Every day, while they made their way home, I made my way to the library, where I spent the afternoons. Once I could see the paw print shape of the red leaves on the trees, I knew I was close to the path. I closed my eyes and counted 87 steps, opened my eyes, and the front doors of the library swung open. I waved as I passed the librarians and the staff behind the circulation desk. I cast a wistful glance at the thousands of books in the adult section that I was planning on reading every single one of, then made my way to the children's room at the back. I sat down on one of the beanbag chairs and looked around for the nearest book. I was within arm's reach of the new bookshelf, so I grabbed the closest book and examined it. It was a book on horses in medieval times. I'd loved Black Beauty, Misty of Chincoteague, and my friend Flicka, so I opened it and dove in. Medieval times were kind of interesting, but the book was a little bit dry, so I read it quickly, skimming it for interesting facts. I learned that a farrier is someone who takes care of horses' feet. Once I made it to the end, I slammed the book shut like I was spiking a ball. Another book down. 
I was about to pick up another one when Ms. Derrida passed by and said hello. Ms. Derrida wore cat eye glasses and cardigan sweaters over blouses with Peter Pan collars. Her gray hair was short, like a flapper from the 1920s, and she wore a different color of lipstick every day. She had worked at this branch of the library for longer than anyone. Adults were always turning up to talk to her about when they were children in her library. She seemed to know everything about everything. Is my dad here? I asked her. I don't think so, she said. I'm pretty sure I saw the bookmobile leave about an hour ago. Is your mom picking you up later? No, I said. She's on a trip to Ecuador for her job. Ah, said Miss Derrida. Then I expect your dad will make sure to be back by five today. Yeah, I said, and I picked up the next book. It was a book about trains that I'd read a few days ago, so I put it back and was reaching for another one when I noticed Jalissa coming toward me. She vaulted across the room and sprawled across the beanbag chair next to me. Hey, Leandra, she said. What's up? Not much, I said. You want to play? Maybe, I said. I mean, I did want to play, but I also really wanted to read. The other kids are outside. You want to come out? I didn't really. But my parents were always suggesting I go outside, and I knew later I might be wishing I had someone to play with. So I left behind the books and followed Jalissa out the front doors and around to the back of the library. She was older than me, like most of the kids who hung out at the library after school, and she wore a sweatshirt every day, no matter what. There was a narrow stretch of grass and trees between a tall brick wall and the library's outside wall. It was a spot the grown-ups never thought about, but it was our usual place to play. When we arrived, Becky was pouring water into a bucket she'd found. Becky was into horses, and she rode them and mucked out their stables, so she didn't mind getting dirty. Would you like some mud soup? she asked. It was a brown, gloppy mess, full of pebbles and sticks. I pretended to taste it. Mmm, I said. Delicious. No, said Becky sternly. Really eat it. Don't pretend. Becky seemed to enjoy making me uncomfortable. She loved to make me do things I did not want to do. Sometimes I gave in because it was easier than arguing with her, but this time I thought quickly. It needs something, I said, and bent down to pick up some of the red berries that grew along the wall. Ooh, said Becky, throw them in. Demetrius sat on a stump nearby, watching the soup creation. Demetrius was a big baseball fan. As soon as he got out of school, he'd put on his baseball cap and he wouldn't take it off until school the next day. He said he slept in it, too. Where's my soup, he demanded, bringing his fist down onto his thigh, pretending to be the king of our library kingdom. We'd invented library dumb during the summer, and Demetrius had declared himself king. I was usually the court jester or the royal librarian, and Becky liked to play the royal chef. It's coming, your majesty, said Becky, picking up the bucket and bringing it toward him. Thankfully, it looked like today would not be the day I'd have to eat mud. Svetlana was leaning on the wall next to Demetrius, winding her long blonde hair around her index finger. She usually played the queen in the library dumb games, but she really only ever talked about what kind of gown the queen would wear. She wouldn't even let us make her a leaf crown. I hate pretend games, she said. Can't we do something fun? Svetlana was so ready to be a teenager. She was always checking herself out in mirrors or windows or reflective sheets of metal. I don't know what she thought her hair was going to do when she wasn't looking at it, but it clearly demanded her attention every other minute. I said, I know where there are cherries. I'll go get them for everyone. Svetlana rolled her eyes, but Jalissa looked excited. So I ran around the corner and across the parking lot to the cherry trees. I picked as many as I could carry, then ran back to the group. As I arrived, all the kids rushed out at once, racing out and across the parking lot. They ran by me so fast they almost knocked me down. I sat down on the curb and watched them run to the opposite end of the parking lot. Jalissa ran back toward me and shouted, Come on, Leandra, we're going to play tag. That's okay, I said, and ate a cherry. 
It made my eyes water. It was so sour. What are you, scared? shouted Demetrius as he sped by. No, I said. I'm eating cherries. But he was already gone. When Svetlana ran past, she stuck out her tongue. I was starting to feel very anxious. I just wished I were back on the beanbag chair upstairs. Maybe I'd never leave the children's room again. Then suddenly, a pine cone came flying at me and hit me right above the eye. I looked up and saw Becky standing there laughing. Then she put her hand to her mouth and dramatically said, Oops. I immediately started to cry, but I didn't want anyone to see, so I just got up, my arms still full of cherries, and ran back into the library. I went straight into the back corner of the children's room, right behind the shelves that were for reshelving. There was a cart there that I could just about fit onto the bottom shelf of, so I climbed onto it and I hung my jacket across the front so no one could find me. I heard them all come into the library. They'd never learned the rule about being quiet in a library, so I could hear them at the front door and then come into the children's room. I heard them look for me, and then they gave up and left. When it sounded like the coast was clear, I came out and looked at the clock. It was 4.15. I grabbed my backpack, put the cherries in my pencil case, and wondered how to spend the next 45 minutes until my dad would be done with work and ready to take me home. I thought about drawing with the craft supplies or playing with the stuffed animals. But if any of the other kids got cold out there, they'd come back in, and I didn't want to see any of them ever again. Because my dad worked here, I knew the library better than anyone, so there were plenty of places I could go where the other kids would never find me. And there wasn't just the upstairs with the shelves of books and checkout desks and reference desks and a staff room for the librarians. No, downstairs were some offices, a conference room, a giant meeting room that we sometimes watched movies in, and a storeroom for the book sale that the library held a few times a year. The garage for the bookmobile was next door to the storeroom, so my dad often moved books into the bookmobile from there. There were times when the library was closed that we went through the whole library, me and my dad, looking at all the books. Making sure everything's okay, as my dad would say. He'd repair the broken ones in the storeroom. Are you a librarian? I asked him once. I'm a caretaker of books, he said. I technically wasn't supposed to go downstairs. I'd been scolded before by several of the staff members about roaming around down there, but I felt safer in that storeroom than anywhere else in the library. So I sneaked past the circulation desk and pushed open the door that led downstairs when no one was looking. In the storeroom, I ran into Mr. Rodriguez, who was picking up a book that had recently been repaired. Mr. Rodriguez was the reference librarian. He wore colorful ties and shiny shoes. He sat at a desk in the adult section most of the time, answering grown-ups' questions. He had thick, dark hair that he ran his hands through when he thought about things. "'You're not supposed to be down here, are you?' he asked, stroking his beard. "'No,' I said, looking at the floor, trying not to cry again. I was really worried about getting in trouble. He looked at me carefully and said, "'You need a quiet place to read. Is that it, Leandra?' I nodded. You won't touch anything you're not supposed to. I shook my head. I bet your dad will be back very soon, too, won't he? I nodded again. Well, I didn't see you down here, but if I did, I imagine I might find you reading in that comfortable old chair over there, wouldn't I? I nodded with more enthusiasm. And I think I saw some good fairy tales over there and several novels I'd recommend over on that shelf there, he said. Not that you'd be reading down here or anything. I shook my head and smiled. Good, he said. Well, it was nice not seeing you. And he headed upstairs with his book. The pea green chair was a cozy one. It used to be upstairs in the children's room until it got a stain on it that they couldn't remove, so they brought it down here. It had always been a good reading spot for me, so I curled up in it with the novel I pulled off the shelf that Mr. Rodriguez had recommended. I'd read several chapters when I heard the sound of the garage door opening, which was the first sign that the bookmobile had returned with my dad. I put the book on the table next to the chair, and I went to watch the big blue bus roll into the garage. My dad hopped out and gave me a big hug. 
What are you doing down here? He asked. Did all the other kids go home? I shrugged. Well, it's a nice surprise to get a welcome from my favorite girl. I'm just going to make sure this stack of books gets into the right place and then we can go home. Sound good? I nodded and went to get my backpack. That's chapter one, friends. Thank you so much for listening to it. Um, I would love to see any drawings you make or uh, thing, tell me things you liked, things you wonder about, questions you have. Any of those things would be really helpful. Um, it's already helpful just imagining you all listening. So thank you for doing that. Um, so here's, here's some ways that you can have your parents send me information. Um, I have a phone number that is just for this project right now. Um, and no one will pick it up. It, it's not a, an, like, it's not a phone I can answer. It's a Google voicemail. So if you want to call parents, um, and have your, uh, your child leave me a message, that would be amazing. Or you can call yourself and tell me what they said or any ideas. So here is the phone number that you can call. It's 646-847-8758. And again, that's 646-847-8758. Um, so you can just leave me any kind of message about um, what your thoughts are about the first chapter, questions that you have, things that you wonder about. All of those things would be really, really awesome to know. Um, and if you, I might, I might, depending on how comfortable you guys are, I might, uh, put those in the beginning of podcasts. So if I get any, uh, voicemails that I can share with other people, I, w I might, I might just do that. So let me know if that's not okay in your message. Um, but if it is, maybe, maybe it'll be fun to, to get some voices from, from my listeners and we can collect them all together and have a little library book reading club. <laughs> So yeah, so that's one way. Another way would be um, to, if you if if we're friends, and most of you listening are probably friends already, so you can reach out to me on any way that we normally communicate, like a WhatsApp or a text or a email or a Facebook or a Twitter or any of those things. Um, if we don't know each other, it's probably easier via Twitter. So my Twitter handle is at erainbowd. Um, and I bet, I guess, yeah, maybe email would be good too. Um, so yeah, email me at, I have like five email addresses and then I'm now I'm thinking, oh, I should make one <laughs> just for this too, but I don't have one yet. So for the moment you can email me, um, let's have you come to clown hero at gmail.com. And uh, so those are, those are a few options. If you have a better way of reaching out, let me know through one of those ways. And then I can create a, a more, I don't know, open platform um, for hearing from you. And so those are, those are some options for now. And maybe there will be more as we go along. Please, please feel free to share uh, this, this podcast with, with other young people that you may know. And uh, I really look forward to hearing from you if, you if you have some thoughts. And I will try and do this once a week. I'm, I'm not sure that I will, but I'm going to try. <laughs> it's, I'm editing the book as I'm reading it to you. So, um, so it may take me a little while longer sometimes, but for the most part, I'm going to try and, and get this out to you once a week. So look forward to chapter two next week. And I hope you have a good week. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye.